Hi, I'm Lynn Davis, and welcome to Discussions on Democracy. I'm the program manager for a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization called Healthy Democracy that designs and coordinates innovative deliberative democracy programs. We are partnering with the City of Eugene to facilitate a first of its kind review panel. The issue up for deliberation is the implementation of HB 2001, a bill passed by the Oregon Legislature in 2019 that mandates that all cities in Oregon expand the types of housing they allow in single family zones. Our goal in partnering with the City of Eugene is, as always, unbiased, high quality public engagement. The panel has already been selected through a randomized lottery based process that helps ensure broader, more accurate representation. And the panel has already had its first round of meetings as well. It is a wonderful, diverse panel of residents eager to engage on this issue. The purpose of this show, Discussions on Democracy, is to explain the process we're going through. This episode is the first in the series, and to help us get started, we have two guests today, Sophie McGinley, Assistant Planner for the City, and Jennifer Yeh, Eugene City Councilor for Ward 4. Jennifer and Sophie, welcome to Discussions on Democracy. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Well, uh, let's first start, I wanted to start with just a little bit of background of sort of where we are in the process right now. We're recording this sort of in the middle of the process. And just as a background for, for where we came from, there were these 7,500 letters that were sent out to randomly selected residential addresses in the city of Eugene and also the urban growth boundary. Uh, and then 239 people responded. We did a selection event right here in this studio uh, where we selected 30 panelists and 10 alternates using a random but also representative process. Uh, so we got sort of a miniature uh, city in a room. And then we had a steering committee, which Jennifer, well, both of you sit on actually, um, that uh, selected a number of background experts that the panel has already heard from in its first week and then uh, a menu of stakeholders and experts that came, uh, that, that was presented to the panel sort of the end of its first week and it's now in the process of selecting from that menu uh, other folks that are kind of come and speak to the panel. But, so that's sort of where we are at the moment uh, and, and, and we're headed into the section here where the panel is going to be um, uh, coming up with guiding principles that it's going to give back to the city on HB 2001 that will inform the, the code writing work. But let's take a step back sort of to the beginning and let me actually come to you, Sophie, first and ask how the city, how we got connected, first of all, uh, back when, when you first came to us or, or Terry Harding, uh, principal planner of the city, came to us about two years ago and what, why, and, and what was sort of interesting about um, this kind of panel when you first came to talk to us? Terry first approached you all um, because planning is something that affects everyone. You know, it's our built environment. It's where we have um, the opportunity to choose where we live, who we interact with, you know, what services we have access to. And our processes are designed really well for some folks to show up. Um, and there's barriers for widespread public involvement. And so we really were interested in including more people in the conversations around planning and you know, creating a microcosm of Eugene in a room to hear um, distinct needs and preferences um, and desires from folks all around the community. Um, Oregon has 19 statewide planning goals and the first one is citizen involvement. So every planning project is required to involve people to you know, the maximum extent possible. And with healthy democracy, it allows us to build on our existing public engagement system and also include more people. So hopefully this is something um, where we can, you know, affect policy that affects everyone um, and, you know, have, have the actual process of creating that policy be reflective of everyone. So it's a policy for everyone and by everyone, and Healthy Democracy is helping make that possible. Jennifer, let me come to you now. How did you first hear about this kind of panel, and what is, sounds interesting about it to you, sounded interesting about it to you, when you first heard about it? 
Yeah, thanks for the question. So for the last few years, City Council has identified that, you know, engagement with our community and communication with our community is something we really want to prioritize. And for a lot of that, we do lean on staff to come up with new and creative ways. And this is one of those new and creative ways that they, they found to present to us and, and council was very enthusiastic about this option. A lot of our engagement processes really require people to come to us. It's almost a, they're self-selecting to, to engage with us, whether it's because they're at an event that we have a table or because they choose to fill out a survey or they choose to come to a meeting. But with this process, it's a little different. They're, they're being invited to come, even if maybe they didn't even know about the process or they didn't even realize they were interested in it. They're being given an opportunity to say, yeah, maybe I am interested in getting involved. Let me, let me try it out and see what it's like. And so it's, it's only one piece of a, of a larger engagement process with, for our community, but it's, it's, it's different and it's new and it's really exciting and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to how we can keep using it moving into the future. Oh, well, thanks. And that actually reminds me, I wanted to ask you, Sophie, how this sort of fits in. Jennifer mentioned this is part of sort of a bigger public engagement world, and it's, that's even true for this project. What, what are these sort of other, how does this fit in with the other components, public engagement wise with this project? As Councillor Ye mentioned, um, this is really just a piece of our larger puzzle. It's an important piece, uh, but we also are doing engagement with local partners. We held a local partners roundtable that had representatives from organizations and groups all around the city. We also had a boards and commissions roundtable that had representatives from city recognized boards and commissions, um, like Planning Commission and Sustainability Commission. Uh, we're also doing some under 25 uh, young adult engagement. We partnered with a class at the university called Real World DG, and uh, we had a group of four fantastic students doing outreach there, so getting kind of creative in this time of COVID. Um, we also held an equity roundtable, and we'll continue to hold some equity roundtables, and those, have, uh, those roundtables have folks that are um, specifically representing organizations um, that serve underrepresented folks in our community. Uh, something different that we're doing there is we're compensating participants and this builds off of work that the city already did before with the Climate Action Plan Equity Panel. So we're excited to keep that going. And then in early 2021, as we really ramp up our public engagement, we're going to have meetings in a box, which will be um, some meeting materials that people can print out and you know, hold meetings in, you know, in their living room uh, with their loved ones, you know, something that enables people to participate without having to attend a meeting or, or speak to somebody official from the city. We're also going to have a giant survey. So we're thinking about doing a lot of big stuff. This is just the beginning um, and it's just a part, but we are so excited about this part of it. Yeah, you mentioned compensating folks, and that's something I'm not sure we've mentioned about this process as well, that, that folks are compensated at a little over $16 an hour or something like that for their time. Um, and Jennifer, I wanted to ask you about, so you have you both sit on the steering committee, as I mentioned, which is a committee of 12 folks from uh, different uh, sort of interest groups, uh, including a city councilor and staff and, and us as well and is meant to sort of oversee the process from a, from a high level. Um, what's been your experience on the steering committee so far and, and sort of looking at the process so far, if you've attended any of the, any of the sessions? Yeah, so the being on the steering committee has been really interesting because you get to kind of see the behind the scenes, how, how the process uh, lays out and how the decisions are being made um, and, and reflecting back on how how the committee is going and, and if is, is that does it seem to be working are there little tweaks that need to be made so it's been pretty fascinating to see that part because if we start using this process going forward again that's really what's going to be important is making sure the process um, really delivers what we intended you know and what we thought we were going to get out of it um, the group that's been brought together is, is, is diverse and has different opinions and has been working together really well. I've been very impressed with the steering committee and what they've been able to help support um, the citizen committee. 
And Sophie, you mentioned kind of the, the universe that this sits in, in public engagement in Eugene right now. Thinking about other kinds of projects going forward or in your experience in the past, how do you feel like this sort of uh, random representative sample, deliberative process, kind of where does it fit in? Yeah, I think this model can be applied to um, a variety of city projects, you know, outside of planning. Um, as I mentioned earlier, planning affects everyone, you know, everybody has experience with housing. Um, and so that's why a healthy democracy was such a good fit for this project. I think uh, a huge value um, of this project and this partnership is that it's showing that you don't have to be an expert on the subject matter to meaningfully engage with it. And so boards and commissions are awesome because we get folks that you know, commit to terms, they interview with council to get appointed, um, they really commit to learning, and not everybody has the ability to volunteer their time, you know, to, to show up to multiple meetings a month, you know, and dive super deep into a very complex organ land use system. Um, so this is showing that everybody is experts of their own experience, and that's enough to be at the table. Um, something else that we're going to be asking the Healthy Democracy panel is how we can best reach them in the future. You know, what worked about this? It's really exciting that we're doing this, and it's not going to be perfect because it's the first time that we're doing it. So I'm really looking forward to hearing from those folks that represent a broad range of perspectives of Eugene community members, um, how we can be doing better, and how we can bring them to the table on issues that we want to hear from them about. So I really hope in the future, um, we're able to learn from this experience and see what the value is, um, you know, through the participants um, or through the panelists uh, summoning their own experts now. We're now seeing what issues they're interested in. Um, that's a really unique thing. So we gave them some broad background on land use and now they're, they're making those connections to what land use affects, you know, community demographics, the environment, the economy. And this will really show uh, what community members around town are thinking about and what we should be engaging them on and how we should be engaging them, including this participatory democracy process. Sophie made a really good point in there in that a lot of folks in the community, I believe, feel intimidated by land use um, processes and code, and they feel like they need to have this deep understanding before their opinions are relevant. And so this process, the way it was built with kind of front loading some education, I think really gives them that confidence um, that they need to be able to express their opinions a little better. They, even if they didn't have that education, they still have valuable opinions, but being able to get that information and kind of sort it out yourself and how you feel about it can really give you that confidence to be able to take it to that next level where you're you're okay giving your opinion in, in a public setting, which is what we're asking them to do in, in some cases. Um, so that's a, a really great part about this process, which really specifically is good for, I think, this topic, where other topics may be a little more accessible to folks and they be, might be more inclined to, to participate in a in a project that um, and give their feedback. Yeah, it is a pretty wonky topic. And one of the things that's really interesting about this process for us and for our uh, colleagues overseas who do similar things like this uh, is, is the sort of feedback loops that are, that are built into the process. And Sophie, I have a question for you about this, but let me just explain what these look like. So the first nine sessions here, uh, about 22 hours of panel work here in November, December uh, 2020, are getting to an end result of a list of guiding principles prioritized by the panel with rationales that will guide the uh, technical work on HB 2001 code writing that will be done by city staff and, and contractors doing the, doing the technical writing. Then, then we'll come back in a couple of months and the panel will reconvene and look at the first draft of that technical language and review it against their principles and then do that again uh, a couple months later probably, which is, which is sort of an amazing amount of 
involvement from one of these panels. Usually something like this is convened, it produces a thing, and then everybody goes home and who knows what happens to it. It goes into a black box somewhere and it goes into a PDF or whatever and, 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 and often we as members of the general public at least feel like what happened. Uh, but this has, has not one but two places where that's going to come back in, where the panel's going to come back into the process and see the results and give feedback. And I wanted to know from, from you, Sophie, why you were willing to do that. How, how you know, why you, what, what was exciting about doing, doing that and, and um, you know, sort of the city putting itself out there in a way to, to come, you know, have the panel come back and, and review its work, basically. What's so exciting about that is that it creates relationships. You know, often we can reach out to community members, you know, boards and commissions, local partners, and it's a one and done thing. You know, we collect their feedback, we log it, uh, we take that feedback to decision makers, and that's it. Um, and with a process like this, we are having the panel hold themselves accountable and hold staff accountable to all of the work that they're putting into that. And that creates a longer lasting relationship between the panel and the work and also the panel and the city. So I think by having them continually involved throughout the process, um, it allows us to get more meaningful work done. And it also holds staff accountable to really making sure that all of their suggestions, you know, all of their recommendations to staff um, are being heard and considered. And we can adjust and change as we go along. Um, I'm really curious to see how this next phase um, of meetings with Healthy Democracy goes. Right now, they're so focused on those guiding values and principles, and they'll have a couple months. Um, they'll be able to look back and see how we've considered those. You know, they'll be able to look back and see how they came up with those. And then they will start really get diving deep into uh, technical work in early 2021. Sophie uh, exactly has it right. We're trying to build relationships. If we can get someone's opinion once, that's great and that's useful. But if we can create a system that makes them want to come back for another process, maybe a totally different subject, that's even better because we're continuing to get that valuable feedback from our community. Um, we, we know we already that we have a limited, I mean, we have good feedback for our community, our size, but it can, we still have a ways to go. And so anytime we can increase that uh, is gonna be really valuable. And it has a ripple effect because these people talk to their family. So I talk to their friends about how their experience was engaging with the city. And if that's a positive experience where they felt like their feedback was, was heard and, and action was taken based on it, uh, they're going to tell their friends and family that. And, and hopefully we can start to build um, inroads into these communities where they're comfortable coming to us. They want to come to us because they know that we're listening and they know that something is going to happen with that feedback. So, Sophie, we got really excited. We started out as a state sort of state level organization, essentially, and have recently gotten really excited about local government and the potential of, of democratic society to be built at the local level and sort of from that level up. And um, I have the sense that you're excited about that kind of thing too. Absolutely. I love local government. Um, you know, people like myself and Councillor Ye, um, we see the power of local government, and clearly we've figured out how to be involved in it. You know, Councillor Ye is an, an elected uh, council member, and I work for the city as staff. And the really wonderful thing about local government is, the, is that everything is designed to be as transparent as possible and to be run by the people. So this is a really exciting opportunity to bring more people into the room and show them just how much their voice matters and just how much the system, it really wants to hear their voice. So I hope that th throughout this, people just see um, that we are here for them. You know, we're merely the messengers. Uh, staff collects as many voices as we can, and then we take them to council and council listens to as many voices as they can and then base their decisions and recommendations off of that. So we want people to see they have the power to influence what their city is like. They have the power to make this a better place for everyone. And, you know, 
their their voice matters, their voice counts, and we want to hear it. Yes, local government is has so much of an effect on people's lives that I don't think they realize on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, that we get really excited about national issues or state issues, but it's oftentimes the the issues right that are happening right in your own town that affect your day-to-day -day lives that on a scale that is not comparable to some of these others. And if when people start to get engaged, I know for myself when I started to get engaged, um, I started to realize that, that these, these things that seem small and insignificant actually affect me every day. And by getting involved um, with my neighbors uh, to, to work on these issues and try to do them the best we can, um, it, it really impacts my life, my children's lives, my neighbor's lives. Uh, it's, it's really, I think, obviously Sophie and I do this because it's exciting to us and we think it's really valuable, but I think people will see as they get involved that it's exciting and valuable for them as well. Um, and the nice thing about working in a, in a group of, of folks at a local level and with staff is that everyone's neighbors. You know, we all live right here in this community and we deal with the same issues. And we may have different perspectives and we may, may have different opinions, but if we gather all those in one room, we're gonna make a better outcome than if we just have one or two opinions. So we really want those people to come with their different opinions and share them together and talk about it. And I've seen the power of that. I've seen decisions that have changed um, over the course of, of receiving engagement, sometimes even at the last minute when some new thing came up and you have to course correct. You have to, like you've been saying, you go and do that feedback loop and you incorporate that new information and things can change. So it's well worth people's time. Well, that's a perfect note to end on. Jennifer and Sophie, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. And thank you for watching. In the next episode of Discussions on Democracy, we're going to explore one of the most vital and foundational elements of creating a review panel, the selection process. Our guests will be two incredibly bright and talented PhD students from Carnegie Mellon University who actually write the software that makes the randomized selection process possible. You definitely don't want to miss that one. I'm Lynn Davis, Program Manager for Healthy Democracy. See you next time.